Hi everyone, Nubkex here, and today I want to talk to you about the Maw 2.0. And honestly, I've been very impressed here today with the footage I'm going to show you uh, with what Blizzard has done to improve the Maw. So we're going to be checking out a Maw Assault. This is a Kyrian Assault in the Maw. As you can see right there, it does still use the old Assault icon from, from patch 8.3, so that's very much placeholder. Um, but yeah, this is, I presume, one example of one of the assaults, one of the potential assaults that could be in the Maw. I'm guessing there are other assaults in other areas that involve different characters, different types of quests. So we'll see. But anyway, this is how it starts out. As you can see, this one takes place in Zoval's Cauldron, which is the, the, the probably the place in the Maw that you know the best, because it's right beside Venari's Refuge. Um, we've got a bunch of quests here to do, and we're diving right in. Now, look at this furnace right here. This... I think this encapsulates what they've actually succeeded at doing here with this these maw assaults. So these furnaces, whereas before they were just sort of there, now you can see there are these giant rings of fire around these furnaces which, which are spewing out fireballs. There's like lava and eruptions and all that sort of stuff in there. The furnaces are now actually a danger. They're an environmental hazard because they're hot, right? Look at that. It's, it's not a place you want to go into. Now, the vent here are here though. Tubbins and Gubbins, you can see I'm holding a parasol. You can talk to Tubbins and Gubbins. They will lend you their parasol, which will let you get in, in there underneath those meteors and be safe. You can see it here in the background, like the ground is erupting. You don't want to be in that and blah, blah, blah. Here's another example of one of the quests. You know, help these little uh, Kyrian dudes set up their bell. Um, ring the bell and a bunch of reinforcements will fly in. Another one of these quests here, as you can see, there are these spears now littered around the place. We have to pick up these spears, uh, and they're actually super powerful, which is, again, something I really liked. These do a big chunk of AoE damage. I think we're going to see it on these enemies over here. They do a big chunk of AoE damage. So that, again, feels good. It's this quest item that's actually meaningful to pick up because it really speeds up your run. And by the way, check out these new en enemy models. We've got this enraged forge shard, who's like this fiery crystal guy, an ascendant of flame. This was something else that really, really impressed me here, was that there, there are just a whole bunch of new enemy types. Can you see that Mawforge construct, construct in the distance there? He's pretty cool. We'll see him more later. But there are just way more enemy types now in the Maw. And again, for the Zoval's Cauldron, for this flame-themed area, there's a whole bunch of flame-themed enemies. Really, really cool. This is one annoying thing with one of, with these quests is one of the quests was to throw these spears you're picking up at these moss-worn myrmidons who are flying in the sky. That was a pain in the ass. It was just kind of hard to actually hit them. They'd be saying they're out of range. It was just kind of hard to tell. So they definitely need to up the range of that javelin throw just to make it less tedious. But again, we can see another enemy type here coming in, obviously echoing a bunch of the, the abilities in Torghast, that massive strike chaining you, pulling you in, and slowing you down. You have to kick the chain. I just thought this was a cool animation, right, of these Kyrian uh, angels, like, warping in and then flying off to, to join the battle, uh, which was really cool. And you, again, you will see that there are a bunch of Covenant forces now in the area uh, fighting and doing all that stuff. By the way, we are mounted, as you can see. That's another thing. Uh, by doing the intro quest here for 9.1, you will unlock the ability to just run around the Maw mounted at any time at any point so that whole hassle is gone and you also become immune to the eye of the jailer it's not on the top of my screen it's gone this is not something we have to worry about you're just not doing that anymore at all there are still rares and stuff around the place that you can go and kill from what i've seen but it's these new maw assaults which are kind of the, the big draw they are the big draw and it looks like they'll cycle every few days I just wanted to backtrack the footage a little bit because this was the part that I enjoyed the most. Again, the angels teleporting in is just cool. Kyrian teleporting in. But this is the area that I always go every week to farm my souls. And it's super chill. There's nothing going on. I just came up here and I was like, wow, this is so much cooler. We've got all of these just explosions everywhere. These forges throwing out fire. These en enraged uh, fire shards or whatever running around. I was like, wow, my super chill farm spot to get my weekly souls from those stone prisons has turned into just this absolute hellhole with just explosions and fire. And it is not a place you want to be. Okay, so we have done all of our quests here. Let's check out what it looks like here at the end of this assault. So we, we did all the stuff. Again, it's a little bit of busy work. It keeps you, you know, it keeps you busy. Let me see, in terms of recording, it took about 10 minutes to do all that. Not too bad, right? 10 minutes, hop into the assault, and then we get this, uh, 
kind of two stages to the, the final part of the assault. So we've got your standard uh, fly and, and you know orbital bombardment thing. Throw your spears down at the stuff on the ground. It's relatively quick. It's inoffensive, I think. And again, I actually thought it was quite, quite cool. You've got a long cooldown. I, I thought it was one of the better implemented ones, though it's, it's absolutely nothing new here. You've done this a million times. Um... But I just thought it's kind of thematic, right? You've seen your angels flying around the place. Now you actually get to join in with them and, and throw stuff down. When we complete this section here, which we're just about done, we go into this final confrontation. So this Flameforge Colossus, who I think was just always the boss, a little mini boss that was up in this area. Now he is actually the final boss of this uh, Kyrian Assault. So we go in uh, and we are able to fight him. I don't know why he's on half health. I don't know, but he is. That's fine. So we'll come in here, we'll fight him. You can see we've got Kyrian jumping down, joining the fight. Or, well, they're jumping down and they're standing there, actually. They're kind of looking. I like this one over on the right. She's just watching. <laughs> she's like, you know what? Want well, nothing to do with that. Uh, she's AFK, then she gets hit. Her wow icon on the bottom of her screen starts flashing. She goes, oh, better tab back in. Stop watching, uh, stop watching anime. Um, but there you go. Weirdly enough, you just sort of get teleported away at the end, which is a bit jarring. But there is that. And then we have to go back to Corthia, the new area of the mall, uh, to turn it in. I think I do open the chest in a second. You can see, actually, you can't see. Hang on. Let me remove me. Uh, you can see here in the bottom left, we got a big chunk of um, reputation with the Death's Advance, with the Ascended, and with the Court of Harvesters. So uh, the new faction, Death's Advance. Uh, plus the two uh, Covenants uh, factions that were involved there. And we got an item level 203 piece of loot. Apparently it's a new coloration of that as well. So a nice bit of catch-up gear. Um, and yeah, again, in terms of the video length, it was about 13 minutes. Hop on every few days. Hop on, do this assault. Get a whole massive chunk of rep to unlock those cosmetic rewards uh, and whatnot. Let's jump ahead here because we're going to check out the new uh, Wrath of the Jailer. The new Wrath of the Jailer type mechanics so this is very cool this is now called lieutenants of the jailer uh so i'm sort of trying to work it out here and what's going on but as you can see on the mini map we've got that giant glowing dot and we can see the giant glowing enemy they're trying to make it very clear what's going on this giant glowing enemy the flame wrath pyromancer he is going around the place you can see the bar is at 33 percent right now um I, I did actually die to these guys a couple of times i don't remember if i died to this first one um, but yeah, you actually have to kill these specific lieutenants now to actually trigger the, the final confrontation. But the bigger thing, which is not very obvious here, and me forgetting to kick inner flames because I didn't even notice it, because I'm bad, and it's default UI. Um, the big thing you're going to see here, which I think is super cool, is that these events, these Wrath of the Jailer events, are now Tormentors of Torghast. And they are themed after the areas of Torgas. So for example, this area, which we're gonna see here, Soul Forge Embers, this is themed after the Soul Forges. So it's themed after fire. Uh, they're gonna be, these lieutenants are dropping these fiery orbs, which explode. Let me actually skip ahead and show you some of the enemies and how that has changed in the area. Okay, so here we are going into whatever that this, this place was in the background. This is actually, I think, where I did my first ever Wrath of the Jailer. But going in here and I was like, whoa, hang on. These enemies are like glowing red. What is going on here? Okay, this is a little bit different. This is kind of cool. Uh, I think I'll show you the tooltip in a second. Uh, there we go. Mark of the Soul Forges. Mark of the Soul Forges. So they're getting extra effects. They're doing extra fire damage. Uh, and they also have uh, some of these enemies. They have the potential when they die to split into those little fire elementals. You know, like the guys in the, 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 the uh, Zoval's Cauldron area do. Right, they split into little fire elementals because they're fire themed. You'll have those those exploding fire bombs dropping out because that is the theme of the event that's running at the time. And it, presumably there will be six of these different types of events with six different types of lieutenants, six different types of power ups on these enemies in the area uh, that will affect this. So skipping on ahead, we actually went we went all around the area. We actually killed off the lieutenants and I died a couple of times doing it. Um, that's for sure. And it was also bugged, so my corpse wasn't there, so I lost I lost a whole lot of Stygia here on the test realm, which is truly a tragedy. I'll survive somehow. But here we go. We're coming back into this area. The Tormentor, he does not patrol. He is just sat in his spot, and there he is, Malleus Gracchus, a big, fiery dude. This is actually what I was calling for for my Torghast rework, was that there, 
there's literally a boss on Torgas that looks like this, and I said, he should be the boss for the Soul Forges. That just makes sense, a fixed boss. But it looks like this guy quite possibly could be the boss, the tormentor, for the uh, for the fire, the Soul Forge themed. Here we go. Look at these Stygic Embers. The enemy split into these Stygic Embers. It's annoying, but it's damn cool theme-wise. <laughs> yeah, it looks like this guy is always going to be the tormentor, perhaps for the Soul Forges. Maybe there's a couple. I don't know. But this guy, he's certainly one of those bosses. Uh, so we, we're going to take him on here, um, and we'll see how we do. We're not going to win, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you will, you'll see. He, he doesn't seem to do too much. Uh, he, he doesn't seem all that much harder than the elites were. Now, I, obviously, I was able to solo the elites with all of my uh, cooldowns up uh, as a Shadow Priest. That's in, in Mythic uh, Castle and Athra gear. Um, for most people, definitely the intent for this seems to be mostly that this would be a group activity, that you, you do it with a few different players, or there'd be a few players in the area taking part, killing the lieutenants together, and then working on the boss together. Now, this is one thing that was a little disappointing. This guy doesn't seem to actually do anything, except just smack me. So maybe that's a bit work in progress. It would be nice to see him have some nice big AoE fire attacks uh, to do a little bit more. I mean, he smacks me pretty hard. But, uh, I mean, if we had an actual tank here, or if I was a spec, you know, like, with a bit more self-healing. Not saying, Shadow Priest is actually pretty good self-healing, but, you know, yeah. If we had a tank, the tank would just stand there, tank and spank, and he's dead. So there's definitely work to be done here, for sure. Uh, I was kind of looking to see, can I, like, blink away and go somewhere? But there's really not much room to work with. I should have just uh, teleported back up the stairs instead, I suppose. Yeah, we're getting overrun here. I was like, where are my health potions? Oh god, these bags are default bags. I didn't put health potions on my bars because I'm using default bars. And we are dead. But there you are. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool, right? That is the new version of their Wrath of the Jailer. So with that, we went off to hand in, finally, the, uh, the, the final quest for our assault. Uh, running with our, our tail between our legs because we did not manage to beat that guy but hey check out this dude the maw forge construct this giant fiery golem very um very very reminiscent of like space marines or chaos space marines from warhammer that's really what it reminds me of now this guy this guy has some fiery moves man give this guy's move set tell tell this guy to, to coach that other boss on what to do because this guy looks awesome but yeah we took him out uh as, as revenge <laughs> to make ourselves feel a little bit better uh, for failing to kill the, uh, the, the the Tormentor. And with that, we're into Venari's Refuge. You can actually see the Torghast is closed off right now. We can't play it. But this is where we have the current teleporter. It's a little bit wonky. It brings up a flight path screen. But here we go. We're going to be uh, teleporting from Venari's Refuge over to the new area of Corthia. Uh, I'm going to have a whole video, guys, on Corthia. Uh, very very soon i just have it on pause right now because currently one of the the main quest line chains is broken um there's a mob that's supposed to spawn in that just doesn't uh so there's some bug there hopefully it'll be fixed you know today or tomorrow and we can continue with the quest line uh, i don't want to give you kind of my my main impressions on it yet until i've you know, just in case there is phasing or there's new activities or stuff that open up once the, the quest line is completed. So just waiting for that to be fixed. But here we go. You'll get a little sneak preview here as we arrive in Keeper's Respite. This is your hub area in Corthia. And again, something weird that I'm going to mention right here right now is I did all these dailies, but the dailies are all back or like some of them are different. So I don't know if these dailies are like constantly cycling every few hours or if they reset the server to try to fix stuff or what. I don't know right now. But that is worth noting. <laughs> but there you go. We came, we turned it in, and it literally gave us, like, basically nothing. We got 51 gold for turning in the assault quest. So maybe that's a little placeholder right now. I'm not sure. <laughs> it seems a bit silly. Uh, but there you go, guys. The Maw 2.0. Obviously, we've got this whole new area of the Maw, Corthia. Um, video on that to come. But from what I've seen and, and how they're changing the existing Maw right now, so much better being able to mount up. No Eye of the Jailer, not worrying about any of that. The new Maw Assaults seem actually super fun. They seem really cool. Uh, and, and the main thing that I love about it is that they've really improved the theme of the Maw. The fiery area, Zovall's Cauldron, actually felt fiery. 
it was actually cool. There was a whole bunch of new new models in there, new monsters, new enemies that are all fire themed, amping up the environmental effects, the whole war between the Covenant forces and that. It was super badass. You get to see the bug quest. So I'm a massive fan. Uh, and then again, uh, upgrading the, the those sort of weekly event. I don't even know if it's weekly anymore, but upgrading the event um, to, to, to be themed after the wings of Torghast. Super cool too, so pretty badass. Here you can see this guy's supposed to turn into something. Sometimes he, he starts saying like deprecated, not implemented, and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty nice. But there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ooh, desktop. Goodbye. <laughs>